In this lecture, we're going to introduce Einstein's summation convention. While few students find this notation a bit confusing, it is imperative to recognize that this notation is introduced to achieve notational brevity. Using this notation allows writing very long equations in a very short and compact form. In essence, here's what the convention is. According to Einstein's summation convention, when an index appears twice in a single term, it implies summation of that term over all the values of the index, which are almost always the values of 1, 2, and 3, since the underlying space is the three-dimensional vector space, R3. Let's examine how this convention works with a few examples. First, let's consider the simplest element of our three-dimensional vector space, a vector u. This vector has three components, u1, u2, and u3, along the three directions e1, e2, and e3. It can be written as the sum of u1, e1, plus u2, e2, plus u3, e3. It can also be written as the sum of ui e i, where i goes from 1 to 3. If we adopt Einstein's summation convention, we can drop the sum sign, and we can briefly write u as equal to ui e i. Similarly, let's see how we can use Einstein's summation convention to find the expression of u dot e i. We can replace u with its own component form u j e j and here we picked the subscript j which is different from i as they are independent of each other. We know that e i dot e j gives the Kronecker delta delta i j. So we are left with u j delta j i. This is, um, there is a summation implied over j. However, delta j i is zero for all values of j that are not equal to i. Therefore, this expression will yield u subscript i. Let's go through another example. Consider two vectors u and v, and let's look at their cross product. The first component is given by this form. The first component of u cross v is equal to u2 v3 minus u3 v2. The second is u3 v1 minus u1 v3. The third is u1 v3 minus u3 v1. We can write a compact form of this general component using the alternator symbol. The component i of u cross v, so the component i of u cross v, is equal to the sum over uh, j k from 1 to 3 of epsilon i j k u j v k. Adopting Einstein's summation convention, we can then drop the sum sign and write that the component i is equal to this uh, term. We could also write the vector u cross v by simply adding uh, e i to the, to the uh, term epsilon i j k u j v k. And summation here is implied over the three a subscript i, j, and k because all of them are repeated. Let's look at another example. mu, where m is a matrix and u is a vector, 
mu gives me a vector in R3. The ith component of this vector is obtained by taking the dot product of rho number i with u. In other words, the ith component is equal to the sum over j from 1 to 3 of mij uj. We can then drop the sum sign by adopting the Einstein summation convention and write that the ith component of mu is equal to mij uj. Let's consider the matrices m, n, and k. When multiplied by each other, they give another matrix with components i, j. So m, n, k is a matrix that has components i, j. This matrix is obtained by summing over the internal subscripts of these matrices. The first matrix M takes subscript I and a new subscript K. The second matrix takes the subscript K and a new one L. And the matrix K takes a subscript L and the free subscript J. Summation is over k and l. We can then drop the sum sign and notice that the free subscripts on the left are the free subscripts on the right. i and j are not repeated on the left, they are not repeated on the right either. k is repeated, there is a summation implied over k, and there is l, l is repeated, there is a summation implied over l as well. Here we repeat the previous example, but we use n transpose instead of n. m n transpose k is a matrix that has components i and j. We're going to repeat exactly what we did in the previous example, but the difference is because the transpose of n is n after a switch, switching its subscripts. And so you'll find that the only difference between this example and the previous example is that we're switching the subscripts of n. Similarly, the same example, but using m transpose instead of m, the only difference is that we're switching uh, the subscripts of m instead of m i k, we're using m transpose, so this will be m sub ki. Let's look at another example. v dot mu. v is a vector, mu is a vector. When I take the dot product of two vectors, I get a scalar. The dot product between two vectors is a scalar and it's equal to the sum of the components multiplied by each other. So v dot mu is the sum of the ith component of v multiplied by the ith component of mu. Remember from the first example, the ith component of mu is equal to mij uj, where there is sum implied over g. So here we've got the summation ij equal 1 to 3. Adopting the Einstein summation convention, we can drop the sum sign and write that v dot mu is equal to v sub i m i j u j. Notice that we don't have any free subscripts; they're all repeated, implying that all uh, uh, that 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 everything uh, that the implying that this um, the, the the summation happens in all in i over i and over j. Here's another example. Let's look at the triple product of three vectors. First, we take the dot product between the vector u and the vector v cross w. 
which is equivalent to summation over i j k from 1 to 3 of u i epsilon i j k v j w k we can then drop the sum sign and write the expression without it again notice that there are no free indices implying that summation is over all indices and that this quantity represents a real number